exactly a year ago when india had reported its 100th covid positive case a user on reddit posted this to the site's r/india subreddit the anonymous user described that they were preparing a database on google sheets to collect as much information as possible regarding the transmission of the coronavirus in india i was mindlessly doom scrolling through my news feed when i first discovered this post and this one sentence really bothered me doing this from the start of the epidemic will be valuable data in the future hmm what a weird way to spend time during quarantine right but i opened the spreadsheet and it looked fairly simple 100 rows of transmission data right from the first reported case on january 30th 2020 to then present 100th case each row was tagged with the source which was either a state bulletin or a press release reporting on behalf of medical institutions since every transmission was recorded adding up all the numbers gave an up to date overview of the number of people across four different categories confirmed with those who tested positive active with those who were actively carrying the virus recovered with those who were immune to the virus and deceased with those who fought really really hard but unfortunately couldn't make it these calculations were automated and stored in the second sheet in the third sheet there was a breakdown of the statistics group by states and in the fourth sheet there were instructions for newcomers to enter new data wait a minute so anybody on the internet could potentially modify the contents of the sheet now i don't know about you guys but this is what i was expecting to happen to the page in just a few hours but i gave it a shot i read the instructions and there was a call for volunteers to help with data entry and at the bottom there was a link to join a group chat it was the weekend in the middle of a worldwide quarantine so i figured why not spare some time and help with whatever this person was trying to accomplish so i hopped onto the group chat and very quickly realized that i wasn't the only person who walked in hoping to help there were about 300 people already in there talking about all the different ways each one of them could help i noticed a pinned message at the top summarizing the roadmap and describing the kind of help required to maintain this initiative for the next coming days i didn't know anybody in the group and i am pretty sure nobody knew each other as well but people just seemed to pick whatever they could help with from the list and branched out to smaller groups that were focused on a single type of work at that time these were data operations and web development in the data operations group people volunteered to keep an eye on press releases from various sources and share them with the group whenever there was an update after verifying the source someone would then document it on the sheet a few others would then double check the new entry to make sure they had gotten it right and the updates would then get published similarly in the web development group people volunteer to keep an eye on the website source code whenever people found bugs on the website they would file issues and describe what was acting weird after figuring out a solution someone would then update the code that fixed the bug a few others would then double check the updated code to make sure they too had gotten it right and the changes would then be reflected on the website pretty straightforward right So when I joined the COVID-19 outbreak was in its early phase of the pandemic. The data operations group made about 10 updates every day and I found that to be super overwhelming. The web development group they were talking about fixing bugs and adding new things to the website. So I dropped them a message saying, "Hey, I could help with that." Over the weekend, the team came together and made a lot of improvements to the code base. One of the things that we agreed to from the very beginning was to keep things as simple as possible. We knew that this was going to be a collaborative, crowdsourced effort. So we believed that using simpler tools that a good majority of people already knew or perhaps could be learned easily would make it a more inclusive space for anybody to walk in and participate. So with this philosophy in mind, this was how the tech infrastructure looked like.
we stuck with Google Sheets and used it as a primary database. Anybody could easily create, read, update, and delete things off a spreadsheet. Yep, we actually use Google Sheets as a database. We redesigned the website on top of an open source framework called React.js that made it easier for people to create and share interactive components without worrying too much about how the rest of the website worked. Everyone from seasoned developers to absolute beginners created maps and graphs and were able to easily plug them into the website. Finally, every 10 minutes, a script took snapshots of all the sheets, converted them into structured data, and published the data to this URL. Whenever anyone visited the website, it referred to the data present in this URL and populated the page with the latest aggregated statistics. This helped to keep the project's total expenditure to about zero rupees and allowed 300 volunteers to collaborate without any friction in the process. At the start of the week, we began to see over 8,000 people visiting the website in just a single day. That's a lot of people. And as much as we were worried about scaling the tech infrastructure to support 300 volunteers, none of us had any previous experiences with scaling reliability or accountability to the general public. One trivial bug and you could end up causing chaos at a time when it's crucial for everybody to remain calm. In less than 24 hours, 6 million people were on the front page to keep up with the numbers. That brought in a lot of questions on social media like, is this official? Who are you guys? How are you doing this by the way? In no time, a new bunch of incoming volunteers branched out to take care of social media. They created an account representing the initiative, reached out to as many people as possible, and clarified with answers. Since all the work done was transparent and open source, it helped people vouch for our credibility. Whenever we made mistakes, people were quick to correct us. This very quickly grew into a medium of communications between the volunteers and the general public. They were able to run multiple awareness campaigns, data analysis features, and Q&A sessions with experts to bring a scientific and data-driven approach to the situation. Questions then turned into, where can I find a testing center in Madurai? What's the curfew time in Chennai? I'd like to volunteer, how do I get started? Social media can be incredibly volatile when talking about a subject like COVID-19 which stands at the intersection of health, data, politics, and all the emotional uncertainties that was brought about by the lockdown. However, helplessness and vulnerability to the crisis drove a lot of these questions. Withholding updates only fueled uncertainty, fear, and even the spread of dangerous misinformation. Being transparent, empathetic, and objective with our communications significantly help people be at ease. Soon, many joined together and kept us on our toes by tagging us to press releases and eventually many cheered us on to keep the good work going. A couple of weeks in, the energy was still running high and many more still joined the group, hoping to help. These were some of the things that were made possible. Essentials help people find the nearest testing centers, food banks, shelters, open supermarkets, etc. Localization. People from different states came together and translated the website into these many regional languages. Behind the scenes, the group chat also opened up conversations and collaborations between researchers, journalists, economists, and many more. While development had run its course and had eventually started to ease down a little, the real work had begun for the folks in the data operations crew. They were absolutely floored with the rise in the number of people testing positive and fighting the virus. To give you some context, each of the 28 states and 8 union territories had separate channels of communication and reporting with varying degrees of granularity and structure. Even though the reporting was half as hard, the team only had to record a handful of cases to begin with. The months following May, the team had moved on from aggregating by states to aggregating by districts. 
there are about 700 districts in india and with four data points collected for each that's about 2800 data points collected per day even though many districts and states were unable to release all the details the data collected was still vast so the team had to improvise on the fly by reevaluating their operations multiple times adapting to the changing nature of primary sources and sometimes even breaking the limits of google sheets for instance some of them even built custom big text recognition scripts to sift through multiple pdfs as they came in and quickly turn them into something they could make sense of but at the end of the day regardless of all the tech magic and software gymnastics the final entries were input by volunteers in order to avoid any glaring mistakes it's true that technology has made collaborating with multiple people easier than ever before however computers don't feel the heavy toll that comes along with adding thousands of rows to a spreadsheet each row in there gave us a little glimpse into the lives of thousands of indians getting through this awful pandemic and given the grim nature of the volunteers work getting through some of the worst days wasn't easy and i'm sure it wasn't easy for you as well all of us entered a very painful period in our country's history when over 50,000 people's lives were at stake every day the economy was severely tanking people were losing their jobs and most importantly a lot of people were dying for some they were friends and for some they were family we lost a lot of people along the way and that sucks but what surprises me the most is that people still showed up none of us in the group had met each other before and every interaction was online yet there was the sense of familiarity that brought us all together in the midst of this very uneventful moment of our lives people checked in on each other across different countries and time zones and there existed this sense of empathy care and selflessness things i never would have thought to witness happen over a spreadsheet but it was there every row in there fell personal to each one of us at some point and that's been the invisible culture that has sustained this initiative for more than a year now today marks one year since someone posted this on the internet hoping that doing this from the start of this pandemic would be valuable data in the future throughout this journey covid19india.org has become a significant source of information for research state governments and even the very recently released economic survey of india eventually this initiative will have to stop which is the goal but until then we will continue to take it one day at a time over the last year so many of you have helped us in so many different ways and we sincerely appreciate all the help you've helped us believe that collaboration has no limits